Hey, kia ora mai tātou, the far note. Uh, welcome back to Word on Monday. This is my first uh, Word on Monday for 2024. Um, and it comes uh, in the backdrop of what's going on in our nation over the next couple of days. <clears throat> for those that are watching overseas, uh, New Zealand is coming up to our national public holiday on the 6th of February, uh, which is called Waitangi Day. And Waitangi Day... Um, is a celebration or a commemoration of the signing of the Tiriti or Waitangi back on the 6th of February, well, the initial signing. Um, and uh, back in 1975, under the sponsorship of Matiurata, Rata, um, we, we had established um, the 6th of February uh, and the Tiriti or Waitangi Act. Um, as uh, New Zealand's national national holiday. And so around the country, uh, people are gathering in their local towns and local uh, community spaces and commemorating, celebrating uh, the signing of the Tiriti o Waitangi. Um, also, there is a call to, um, to honour the treaty, um, to um, settle past grievances through the Tri Waitangi Tribunal, which is a government established uh, uh, tribunal, again sponsored by Maturata. Um, and the uh, intent behind that is to, uh, through the tribunal uh, and that legal process, um, settle past grievances. Um, and there's always calls to honour the treaty, um, which is a big theme that, that happens um, on a regular basis. Uh, and currently, um, there, through the last election, a lot of statements were said about the Māori language, around uh, Māori culture, and, and uh, from a political perspective, it's actually unified a lot of the tribes in Hapu and Māori across the country, uh, whether it's under the sponsorship of uh, the Kingitanga, um, Tainui Waikato uh, Confederation, um, and or um, Ngāpui and the invitation for Fano come up to the Waitangi celebrations up here in Northland. Um, so uh, this time, um, depending on how the media portray this uh, whole event, can be quite um, uh, emotive. Um, and uh, but if you're actually there, like yesterday, we were out at Waitangi and the Kingitanga arrived and. Um, banter, laughter, people sitting on the, the treaty grounds and in the sun and watching and seeing the water and uh, Pewhairangi, which is the Bay of Islands up here. And just a beautiful, beautiful picture and beautiful scene. Families catch, catching up, people got stalls, expo, exposition, expositions um, of different activities that are going on, housing projects, um, health uh, all the all, yeah, just the whole repertoire of uh, different activities people in Māori and communities are involved with. Such a just a lovely, lovely sight up here. It's with this in mind that I want to remind us about the idea of a covenant. Um, I shared yesterday uh, that throughout Scripture, um, God speaks to people and establishes a covenant with them. And the first one we see there is in, in uh, Genesis chapter 9, verse 9, where he said, I will establish a covenant with you in speaking to Abraham and, or Abram and uh, later on his descendants. <clears throat> and there's this ongoing relationship that God desires to have with humanity, uh, but it's through a covenant. Um, it's through a, a pact. It's through a commitment of relationships. It's through um, uh, through uh, a pact where there's skin in the game. And when I mean skin in the game is that there's things that we commit to it to, to demonstrate our willingness to be part of that covenant. Now, there are others that, that write up quite, quite well around the idea of covenant. But for our purposes here... Um, it may have started off with blood sacrifices and, and, and sealing the covenant, uh, like we see with um, doves and birds and sheep and later on in the Jewish sacrificial system in regards to the temple. Um, and then uh, when we come into the New Testament, 
we see Paul speaks of Jesus' sacrifice as a covenant. And the great passage in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 25, where Paul unpacks the Lord's Supper and, and, and speaks of his, the blood sacrifice that Jesus offered uh, as a new covenant, that God has established a new covenant uh, with humanity. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one can come to the Father. That's his Father, our Heavenly Father, except through me. Um, so there's no exceptions. Every single person in this world has a choice to either be in relationship with God through Christ Jesus or turn away from him and deny him. Um, he's laid it clear. There's a new covenant there is requirements to that covenant, a covenant, and there's obligations of that covenant. Um, and those who follow Jesus are a covenant people. Um, and so how now shall we live in, that, in light of that? Uh, is that firstly, our faith journey, our personal faith journey is in community with other people. It's not a lone ranger. We're not isolated. We don't sit on an island by ourselves and try to have our... our um, Nirvana experience of what God is or we don't be like the disciples when the Mount Tr Transfiguration happened they, they wanted to build tents and have this special place on a mountain uh, where they encountered God it's not a pilgrimage it's a daily conscious actions of coming to Jesus the, the Son of God and going I submit to you I pick up my cross, deny myself, and follow you today. Um, I suppose one of the one of the th uh, areas in our in our lives that really reflect this idea of covenant is the marriage covenant between a male and a female, um, where a male and a female come together at a wedding ceremony and commit to each other through thick or thin, through good or bad through richer or poorer, to be committed to each other. And that becomes the foundation for family, it becomes the foundation for raising up children and grandchildren, raising up a legacy in a community. And historically it's been the family that's been the, the, the core functioning body or organism of a healthy community, is having a healthy family having a healthy marriage and it's in this context that the marriage when we see through scripture um, and particularly the, um, the communion feast that we celebrate is taken from the image of a marriage and blown out Jesus talks about him being the groom and the church being the bride is that we are now in covenant with Christ Jesus and their obligations that we're to fulfill. Now it's not it's not done in a way that's a it's a, a it's a works to get our salvation, but rather as a result of what Christ has done, I now should live like this. I now will respond to things in this way. I now will have an eye and an ear to hear what God is doing in our communities. I now will not look over injustice. I will not allow sexual perversion to abuse people um, or entrap people into slavery, modern day slavery, which is the trafficking of children um, or women for sexual pleasures. I now will look at the way we do and raise food in our communities food sovereignty, food security. Um, I now have an eye and an ear to hear what's going on amongst those that are marginalised and uh, poor, um, or those that are on the fringes of things. It's out of the relationship that we have with Jesus, the, the Christian community, and it's, it's a, there's a historical journey of this, have responded to the needs of those in the community.
the difference between humanism and the humanist response um, and the Christian response to human needs is that it's been motivated by faith in the outworking of what God has been doing in our respective communities. The evolution of slavery came from the Christian movements. It wasn't a humanist, it was a Christian movement. The universities that we have historically came out of the churches, the monasteries, this place of study and nurturing of study and development of the mind and the sciences all originated out of the monasteries. Um, it's undeniable the history is there. So this this idea of growing and development and nurturing and seeking out people and and keeping an eye on for those that are less fortunate than others. It's not a political debate. It's not a, a political football, but rather it's God's way of demonstrating his love through humanity, through his chosen people, through the people that he has covenant with. And it's with this background in mind that we walk into the Waitangi celebrations and commemorations. Um, it's not for us to be on one side or the other, but rather it's for us to be a covenant people with God and saying, how can I serve our community? How can I serve our city? How can I serve our nation? Because we're in covenant people. Um, what does it mean to be a covenant people with Māori, with Samoan, with Tongan, with Indian, Malaysian, Filipino, Singaporean, all the peoples around the world, what does it mean to be in covenant with King Jesus and therefore with our communities? So at the moment, Te Tiriti or Waitangi is at the forefront. It's on the news, it's on the media, and people will spin it to get a sound bite or to meet their own needs. But at the foundation of it all is covenant. And honouring the treaty is really just a call to be promise keepers. People that live with truth and are honourable. And so all the narrative we're going to hear over the next couple of days around honouring the treaty, it's really a call to our nation to be promise keepers and people of truth, people that are honourable and respect and honour the promises, the covenants that remain. No reira whānau, he kōrero poto tēnei mō te rā o te mani, ngā mihi atu ki a koutou. We've got a lovely day here, uh, we're going to be heading out soon to Waitangi and just have a look at some of the stalls that are going on and some of the whānau, got family there. I've got a meeting this afternoon with um, uh, Vision West and some team up there we're looking at some housing affordable home development up up here in Kaikui wanting to see if we can um, start that project um, but take it from concept and, and move it into reality um, so do pray for us and what we're doing Our garden projects are going really well we're looking at doing some more this year um, in, in regards to food security and sustainability discipleship youth Wakahodua, uh, lots of things here are happening alongside our daily discipleship with the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face continue to shine upon you. Wherever you're at this week and uh, the plans that God has for you this year, I pray that the blessings of the Lord will be upon you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless Whanau. Mā te atu koutou manaki te a kinga wakatoa. Hei kona.